Hi, this is Craig Delger with the first in a series of videos that uh, we're doing for Pro-Light Gear where we're looking at the best lightweight down jackets. As part of this review series, we used a thermal imaging camera from FLIR to get a digital signature for each jacket. It allowed us to really study the differences that design decisions uh, make on the thermal performance of each jacket and allows us to see where you know uh, heat is escaping through the jacket. It's really interesting when I start showing you some of these images side by side to see the difference that designs and baffles make, uh, you know, the difference that a hood makes or lack of a hood, uh, whether it's important to have a drawstring in the waist of a lightweight jacket. So I'm going to take you through some of these images and we'll be referencing the uh, the learning or the understanding that we came to from this video in future videos when I when I do individual product reviews for each one of these products. Um, the first thing that I want to tell you is a little bit about the process. We conducted the uh, thermal imaging studies over a period of two days. Uh, temperature we kept consistent between 48 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit for an ambient air temperature, and the relative hu humidity was at 63 percent both days. So um, my brother-in-law uh, was kind enough to uh, step in as the, as the model in these while I was working the thermal imaging camera. And uh, we really uh, felt like we furthered our understanding of uh, the difference that design decisions make in the performance of these products. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is baffle design. On the screen right now, and I'll give you close-ups of all this, I've got uh, the Patagonia Ultralight Down hoodie, and it uses uh, kind of a unique baffle design and we just want to understand how that compared from a thermal signature to something like the baffle design that was used in a Montbell x light down jacket. So I'll put those two side by side and you can see that uh, in the Patagonia ultralight down hoodie um, you know all the jackets that we uh, reviewed used a sewn through baffle construction. And what we mean by sewn through baffle construction is that the surface fabric was sewn directly to be in contact with the interior fabric. Everywhere that stitching takes place to construct the wall of the baffle, uh, it's, a, it's a cold spot in the jacket, meaning that warm temperature or warm heat from your body leaks through those areas. And you can see it on the thermal imaging camera. So you can see that the baffle design on something like the Montbell x light Down jacket was actually superior to the baffle design that's being uh, used by the Patagonia Ultralight Down Hoodie. Next I'm going to talk to you real quickly about differences we noticed in the design of hoods, especially when the uh, user is not wearing the hood. So we're going to go back to this uh, Patagonia Ultralight uh, uh, Hooded Down Jacket and we'll be comparing it to the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer Down Jacket. And uh, you can see in these images, if I put them side by side, that uh, the uh, Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer Down Jacket closes up much more tightly around the uh, user's neck. And in this case, the user did say that he felt that the Patagonia was leaking a lot of heat uh, up around the neck, even though he had the zipper all the way up. And if you put these images side by side, you can see that. Uh, I've got the uh, Patagonia jacket on the left and the Mountain Hardware jacket on the right. Let's take you to another image where I compare two jackets side by side, this time one that has a hood and one that does not have a hood, and look at the uh, thermal signature of both those. I'll just go back to that previous image we were using where we're looking at the Patagonia Ultralight Down hoodie and comparing it to the Montbell X-Light Down jacket. And uh, you can see that in the X-Light Down jacket, the neck area, when fully zipped up, really does a good job sealing off the neck area from warm air rising up through the jacket in that area. And once again, you know, without prompting, the user did say that he felt like a lot of heat was escaping through the neck of the Patagonia down jacket. Of course, uh, you know, this is uh, happening because he does not have the hood all the way up and, and on his head. But, uh, you know, oftentimes you're cold enough to want to zip the jacket all the way up, yet not cold enough to warrant putting the hood all the way up. So it is interesting to look at that uh, in terms of determining whether you want a jacket that has a hood or whether a jacket without a hood is uh, a better solution for you. Um, what I'll do next is just uh, take you through several different images of uh, the different uh, jackets. So you can see the different uh, baffle designs and the thermal signature that they uh, uh, registered on the camera.
it was pretty interesting. What we did is we, we wore each jacket for 10 minutes so that uh, it allowed us to fully heat up the jacket and um, you could watch that, uh, that uh, heat start to escape through various parts of the jacket. This is an interesting image to look at. This is the uh, Go Light Selkirk jacket. It's a jacket that's uh, uh, performed very well on our test. But one interesting thing to point out is uh, right up here on the neck line, there's a, uh, a spot where a lot of uh, thermal energy is escaping through the zipper. And what's happening there is uh, uh, the zipper is zipped all the way up, and the neck is, t or the uh, zipper is actually touching the neck right there and allowing just a small amount of heat to escape right there. And uh, we didn't recognize that until we, you know, had some enlarged version of these images. And so it's those type of things that we got to see. I'll show you one other image that uh, was pretty interesting here. This is an interesting image to take a look at. Uh, the model moved as I was getting ready to take an image. And what he did was pull his arms up and pull his shoulders back. He was getting a little tired of standing. And you can see that when he did that, it put tension on the, on the jacket and it, it uh, showed how the heat was escaping. So we're exploring that in terms of thinking about how tight or how loose uh, your jacket is, the difference that it makes in terms of the, th the thermal signature. So we still have some more uh, exploring to do on that front, but I thought that was a pretty interesting image. This is an interesting image uh, for me to show you. This is the Sierra Designs uh, Dry Down Better Vest. And uh, this is a down t-shirt, similar to the Mont Bell down t-shirt. But what differentiates this vest from that vest is that this vest uses uh, stretch fabric on the side. Um, it's, it's cut tighter, so it, it layers really, really nicely. We're actually very impressed with the uh, Sierra Designs Dry Down Better Vest when used as a, a mid-layer uh, insulation piece. Um, it just performs really well. As an exterior piece, of course, you're going to be bleeding a lot of uh, heat from your arms and from these uh, side panels, but that's really not how it's designed to be used or its best application in, in, our, uh, in our estimation. I'll show you this image real quick. This is the Arcteryx Cerium LT, and uh, this jacket is unique in the bunch in that it uses synthetic insulation in the shoulders and in the forearms and other areas that are um, exposed to, to moisture and we were curious to see if the synthetic insulation leaked a lot of uh, a lot of radiant heat or, or thermal energy through it and you can see by these images it does a really good job especially up in the shoulder areas uh, which is where it's used in this jacket it's also used in the forums but they're kind of off screen one last thing I want to point out with uh, what we learned from using this thermal imaging camera is the importance of a drawstring in the waist in this case, I'm using uh, the thermal signature of the Montbelt x Light Down Jacket, which does not have a draw cord in the waist. And unfortunately, I cut off the bottom of uh, the shot here, and you can't see this, but warm air just leaks out the bottom of jackets that don't have a drawstring on them. So, um, yes, you do pay a slight weight penalty for having a draw cord in the waist, but based on our understanding and viewing of these images, that is an investment that you should make in terms of adding that additional weight versus uh, foregoing that because it makes a big difference in terms of the thermal efficiency of the jacket. So, Okay, so that wraps up this first video. I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to what we were doing with the thermal imaging camera from FLIR. We're going to be referencing all these images in the individual product reviews that are going to be put up onto our channel as quickly as I can get them done. But I just want to give you this as a quick teaser and to use as a reference uh, when I uh, talk about these images later on. So thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Thank you for sharing our videos. Uh, it's really been um, exciting for me to see uh, my videos being linked to in all the different communities, etc. out there. And it's really driving a lot of our, subscri uh, our subscriber growth. Uh, and I also want to thank a lot of the brands that have stepped up to uh, help support me as we uh, do these more in-depth product reviews. Uh, your participation has just been great. So thank you so much. Stay tuned for these future videos. I'm pretty excited to, to share them with you. Until then, uh, thanks for watching.